Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We chant Om once together, synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. Sahana Bhavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamastuma Vit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant verses 68 to 72 of chapter 2. Tasma dhyasya mahabaho Tasma dhyasya mahabaho Nigrihita ni sarvashaha Nigrihita ni sarvashaha Indriya ni indriya thebhyaha Indriya ni indriya thebhyaha Tasya pragnya pratishthita Tasya pragnya pratishthita Yani sha sarva bhuta nam Yani sha sarva bhuta nam Tasyam jagarti sayami Tasyam jagarti sayami Yasyam jagrati bhuta ni Yasyam jagrati bhuta ni Sanisha pashyato muni Sanisha pashyato muni Apuryamana machala pratishtam Apuryamana machala pratishtam Samudramapa pravishanti yadvat Samudramapa pravishanti yadvat Tadvat Kamayam pravishanti sarve Tadvat kamayam pravishanti sarve Sashanti mapnoti na kama kami Sashanti mapnoti na kama kami Vihaya kaman yas sarvan Vihaya kaman yas sarvan Pumams charati nispraha Pumams charati nispraha Nirmamo nirahankara Nirmamo nirahankara Sashanti madhi gachati Sashanti madhi gachati Esha brahmi sthiti 
पार्थ ब्राह्मी स्थिति पार्थ नैना प्राप्य विमुह्यति ब्रह्मनिर्वाणमृति हरि ओम एंड अ वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो वी हैव बीन अब्जॉर्बिंग द डीप sadhana messages hidden in this verse verse number 71 now i am deliberately using the word absorbing because the difference between a non sadhak and sadhak is the level of absorption see everybody can get exposed to this wisdom even the yogic approach but that is all from the uh, uh, master's angle but from the student's angle depending on how much you absorb this how much you go with the flow and absorb it to that extent you are a sadhak someone has uh, raised this question as to why is it that the wisdom being the same the words everything being the same why is it that the results don't happen at the same pace with respect to the students it is a it is an interesting question there are many factors to be considered here because each student has his or her own independent set of karmas you have your own belief systems and so many things but those are all various factors uh which don't allow you which affect the rate of absorption so the crux there is the result which you will experience in your life when you gain this wisdom depends on your rate of absorption not the rate of recept reception just because you receive this knowledge means just because you are um uh, alert and you uh, attend these sessions there is no guarantee that results will come the results will come only when you absorb these messages into your system so the rate of absorption is different from one individual to another therefore even though the wisdom the quantity and quality of wisdom is one and the same which is being given the uh, the results happen uh, at different uh, uh, intensities for some people at one go you know just in one session many issues get resolved for some people it takes a while it takes a few weeks for some people it may take many months also so it's not only in general your rate of absorption if you have a particular issue where it is uh, let us say a very deep issue 
then there the rate of absorption will be less. Why is the rate of absorption less? We have to get into many factors as I told you, the karmic blocks, the, uh, the belief systems, the open-mindedness, all those things. But right now I am not getting into all that. We are, we are going to the, uh, that factor, the, the, the main factor which is behind all this. Uh, which uh, prevents or allows you to um, uh, get result from this wisdom. That is, to, uh, the, uh, the, that prevents or allows you to create a transformation in your life. That is your absorption capacity. So, if you want to become a good sadhak, you need to go on increasing your absorption capacity. And the more you are able to absorb, the more you will be able to practice in life. So, it is not enough if you are just exposed to this. Now, you, 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 you can find out, it is very interesting, according to your mind, your mental makeup, which in turn comes from uh, the deeper impressions, the deeper karmas. Now, according to your mental makeup, you will absorb certain things faster, you will absorb certain things at a slower pace. Certain aspects of the wisdom, your mind may resist also. Because there may be strong karmic blocks, strong emotional blocks, which may prevent you from absorbing. Not only will they prevent you from absorbing, they will make you resist that aspect of the wisdom. See, for example, we uh, in the uh, coming next qualities, we will be seeing nirahankara, don't have ego. Now, in certain areas where the ego is very pronounced, uh, that in those aspects, the mind will resist that sadhana. Even nisprihaha, we say, don't have any craving, don't have any jealousy, envy. Now, the area where you have maximum jealousy, uh, in that area, you will find it difficult to absorb this. Why? Because there is a strong karmic block, emotional block. So, when you take guidance from a, from a master, there, are, there will be many things which he says, uh, which will be difficult for you to absorb because of the uh, mental blockages. Invariably, the mind likes to be pampered, the mind likes to be praised all the time. See, supposing a person is very lazy or the person, uh, uh, you know, is lazy in certain areas like work or uh, fulfilling the family responsibilities, it could be in, in any area. Now, the mind will resist that aspect of the wisdom uh, that is overcome your tamas, overcome your laziness. Rather, the mind would want to uh, somehow or other give some reason to justify whatever uh, negative quality it has. That is how the, the, the blocks will function. See, I will give you, a, 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 I will uh, tell you an incident which happened recently. There was a young girl, she must be around uh, seven years old. Now, uh, she asked a question to, to me saying that, uh, 
sometimes when I feel very sleepy and let us say I also want to play, I go and play. In the, in, she's talking about in the night. Let us say I feel sleepy at uh, uh, 9 p.m. But I also uh, I also want to play or I want to see some uh, small uh, cartoon uh, video or something. I do. I, I decide. Okay, let me do that and then come back to sleep. But she says when I finish that and come, I feel very tired. But now the sleep has gone away. So why is that? What should I do? This was what she asked. Now, if you think about it, even adults have the same issue. But till now, no uh, grown-up person has asked this question. Why? Because the ego prevents you from asking itself. A seven-year-old child, she has no ego. So she is just presenting her problem in a simple, straightforward way. And she wanted a practical solution. So what I explained to her was, that see, sleep requires your body also to be at rest and your mind also to be at rest. So when you when you're feeling sleepy and then you watch some program um, in the TV or you go and play, the mind can get into a state of restlessness. So after that, when you come back, your body is tired, but the mind has not yet settled down. That is why you are not able to sleep immediately. So then she asked, now what do I do? How do I overcome this? I, I, I told her very simple. Whenever this happens, just uh, close your eyes and uh, watch your breath. Within a few seconds or few minutes, you will feel very relaxed and you will go off to sleep. So she asked me, what does it mean by watching one's breath? How can I see my breath? Now to which I said, okay, you close your eyes right now and just bring that intention I'm, and just start watching and then you tell me. So she closed her eyes and she took a few breaths and then I said, open your eyes. What was her experience? See, uh, she said, yeah, yeah, my question is solved. I said, well, how, how has it been solved? She said, with my inner eye, I am able to clearly see my breath. And that immediately relaxed me completely. Now, this, uh, this experience is a very profound experience because if the same uh, person was an adult, it wouldn't have been so simple. Because so many questions would have come. What, does, what, what do we mean by exactly seeing? Uh, is there an eye in sight? How do we, what, what technique do we need to adopt? What, do I need to do it uh, in 4 is to 8 proportion or this or that? So many questions will come. But a child has no blocks. Whatever questions were relevant, she asked. And once the answer was given, she was able to practice it immediately. Of course, as uh, she closed her eyes, I had um, also you know, given her a little bit of uh, empowerment, the healing energy, so that she can experience that. So uh, kindly don't go about advising children like that. For this particular girl, this was suitable because she, she is connected uh, in a spiritual way. And, uh, you know, children relate to the master in their own way, in a playful way. But in a playful way, uh, the, it becomes easier for any kind of initiation to be given. So why is it that as you grow up, you lose that capacity, that simplicity? See, she was able to just receive the wisdom, absorb it fully, and then she was able to practice it. The reason is, 
you are loaded with so many blocks mental blocks so when you have a lot of blocks the you you will feel that oh this is impossible this is the the, the possibility of practicing this wisdom seems less to you when i say to you i mean to your mind you will immediately give 101 reasons why it cannot be practiced you will say so much of stress is there um in the modern times is it possible to practice that is another question which someone or other keeps uh, posing you know every now and then these are all okay probably these were applicable in the good old days but in this modern times with the technology advancement is it possible actually the, this has nothing to do with the tech, uh, technological advancement because that is an external advancement and here we are talking about what is happening within you there is no connection but you will bring in so many factors which are unconnected when i say you will bring in your mind brings in because of the blocks so if you truly truly want to um a benefit from this start increasing your absorption capacity that is what it means by become like a child there are so many other aspects also like innocence purity but this is one very powerful aspect which uh, children have their uh the the time gap between reception and absorption that is receiving and absorbing is almost nil for a child you you just have to give them the wisdom in the, at their level in their way using the right psychology they will immediately absorb it and start practicing it whereas as we grow the time gap between receiving and absorbing starts increasing the more blocks you have the time will go on increasing sometimes for years together 2 3 years also you may be listening to this suddenly one day something will strike you know it happened uh, uh, some time back a boy uh, he uh, you know he, he was in college and uh, for one year he was attending the discourses and he used to come and uh, discuss certain issues which he had and then suddenly one day after one year he came to me and said uh, yogesh today it suddenly struck me this is what i need to do and then he asked me but why didn't you tell me for all along for this one year i said this is what i've been telling you for last one year he said but when did you tell me in every lecture every time you have come to me i have been telling you the same thing but because of your blocks you were unable to absorb it now suddenly you have absorbed it and uh, you, uh, you know uh, the transformation has started taking place it took about a year to dissolve those uh, blocks so when using your will power you know if your will power is strong you can uh, dissolve all the mental blocks faster that is in your hands whenever you require help you all you have to do is just close your eyes get connected with the guru shakti with the higher shakti and request for help the help will come again there you have to do it with a pure bhavana not uh, in a half hearted way or uh, with ego and all that so the help will come to build that inner strength so whenever uh, the, the there is a block and that uh, that doesn't allow you to absorb what happens is some sadhaks they tend to drop off the sadhana because they are unable to take it beyond a point it means their desire to transform their lives is not so strong they want results but they don't want to put in efforts 
Now, in another group of sadhaks, they become disillusioned. You know, they are trying, trying and nothing is working, means they become depressed, disillusioned. So, that also is not uh, good. If you understand this principle, then it becomes very simple. The principle of absorption. So, when this wisdom is absorbed 100% in all its dimensions, then you become a sthita pragna. Now, till you become a sthita pragna, you have to go on working on the rate of absorption. Some people tell it as a positive quality. They say, whenever I receive something, I deliberately, you know, don't act on it. Now, after a while, that becomes a habit, you know. You are unable to uh, absorb it spontaneously. So, when you do your daily sadhana, the yoga sankirtan sadhana, when you surrender to the Guru, what happens is slowly, slowly, all your blocks start getting dissolved and uh, your mind becomes very pure. Means there, uh, there are no factors which will disturb the mind. So when the wisdom is being given, the mind immediately absorbs it. It is a beautiful state which you need to try and get into. It, it is not zero or hundred. It's a relative uh, process. So today you, your absorption capacity may be 10%. Now do the sadhana and start increasing. Instead of giving up by saying, oh, this uh, wisdom is not practical or instead of getting disillusioned, what I'm saying is understand that uh, uh, in spite of your best intentions, uh, things are not working out because of these blocks, the rate of absorption is less. So find out those blocks, do the sadhana and you, when you do your personal sadhana, all those will come to the surface and you go on releasing. They will come to the surface according to what you can handle. That is how we have um, uh, uh, we have designed the Yoga Sankirtan audio material. The energy which will be invoked and released during your personal sadhana will be exactly uh, proportional to your to your capacity to handle it. We have uh, uh, put a minimum and maximum limit. Otherwise, if too much of Shakti is awakened, the cleansing process will be so fast and an individual will not be able to handle it. So, in every empowerment session, whenever we have an empowerment session, the blocks, are the you know, so much of energy is transferred and a good chunk of the uh, blocks at the emotional level, at the thought level, at the karmic level, at the physical level, at the pranic level, they are all dissolved due to the higher grace. So, that is why you will find that every empowerment session you attend, uh, your absorption capacity after that would have increased. That is why I say that, uh, you know, the 22-day Kaya Tattva program is available online. Now, ne never think that uh, you are repeating the same program. No. Every time you attend the empowerment course, it is like attending a fresh empowerment. If you are doing it two times, it's not the same program you have done two times. It is like doing two different programs because uh, if you look at it superficially, just the words, the lectures and all that, it may look like the same program. But the uh, if you look at it from the energy point of view, it is not the same, it is not a repetition. So every Sunday when you attend, it will be new. Not only will uh, the uh, uh, will this be new, even if you go back to any one of the previous uh, 
discourses and you take uh, that discourse and start watching it you can experiment it this week you know you go to the previous verse any verse you pick up some uh, discourse and you just watch it this week you will you you will be amazed to find that that will be so new to you actually one person told me that uh, one sunday morning he sat for listening and by mistake he had pressed uh some other discourse which was uh, four or five weeks prior to that particular uh, day and uh, for half an hour he was uh, listening to that and it was very interesting and then uh, his wife happened to see his cell and she pointed out saying that you're watching an old discourse almost four or five weeks back the present one is going on and then only he realized the that he had uh, switched on uh, some other uh, discourse which happened some 4 or 5 weeks back so the most interesting thing which he was sharing was i didn't feel that i had already heard that uh, discourse it was so new to me so uh, what he did was he continued with that and then later on only he saw the that particular day's discourse so what does all this show this only shows that as you progress in your sadhana your rate of absorption will become more and more and as your absorption capacity becomes more the freshness will be there with respect to the same points the same nispriha believe me you come back and hear it after one month you will find that it will be something new to you it will give you it will sound as if it is giving you a new message so this is a very important principle which every sadhak has to practice not not, not giving up the sadhana or not getting into a state of disillusionment but understanding that uh, the this principle of the rate of absorption and go on working on yourself see if you want results you need to put in that hard work you need to put in the right kind of efforts in the right direction the the sadhana tips are being given to you the you know in different angles so that uh, you, know, you know if you just merely attend these sunday sessions it is only a question of time at some point the the wisdom will start entering you but i am putting this word of caution when the wisdom starts entering you your blocks will come and resist that so you need to be careful on that account so we have been seeing this nispriha not having any craving so whenever you have craving see i i'll tell you how this craving is related to peace or how it destroys your peace peace of mind because we need to relate all this to that word shantihi shantim adhigachati as uh, uh, sita pragna attains supreme peace how is that so these uh, by practicing all these things so how is this related to peace we have to see that also so when there is praha intense craving for something what happens is your mind develops unrealistic expectations whenever a person has an intense craving that person will become unrealistic in life there will be no uh, analysis there will be no reference to his or her capacity what are the realities of life nothing the mind will just go on craving for that object or for that person or 
for a particular situation to be in a particular way without any reference to realities. I mean, to give you an absurd example, supposing, let us say, uh, we want the sun to rise in the west, an intense craving. Now, that will definitely um, lead to a lot of stress because that, that will not go in accordance with what the realities are. One of the uh, key principles in spirituality in order to be peaceful is that when your mind conforms its desires to what the realities of life are, that is when your desires follow the natural laws of life, then you will be peaceful, that is Icha. But when your mind does not conform to the realities of life, now that is going to make you very, very stressed. And why is it that uh, these unrealic, unrealistic expectations come? It is because of Spriha. Wherever you have this intense craving, you will have uh, unrealistic expectations there. It could be with your own partner. It could be with your own children. It could be with your colleagues in office. It could be with your boss or subordinate. Anyone. See, supposing uh, your team member is lazy. Now, uh, uh, you know, your capacity to change your team member and all that is limited because you may not have those powers. Uh, in the, I'm talking of in the company. So now, uh, instead of merely expecting him to be prompt, if you uh, assess that person and say, yes, this is what the person is, he is very lazy. So accordingly, if you change the, uh, the, ta the target timings and give that person a little more time, you will be able to achieve your targets peacefully. But instead of doing that, if you have an intense craving, what will happen is you will not be able to think. You will develop an unrealistic expectation that person has to be prompt when you know very well that that person is lazy. So your action plan will also not be an intelligent plan. It will not, you will not adjust your plans according to uh, the person uh, to get to achieve the best results. So the result would be, there will be a clash. Like this, I can go on giving you so many examples. The best is for you to look into your own life. So if uh, last week I gave you some tips of how to know, uh, uh, you know, where your, uh, how to locate your sprihaha, that is the cravings in your life. Now this is one more tip I am giving you. Wherever you have unrealistic expectations, it means you have a, an intense craving in that area. The craving could be for uh, cleanliness. The cra when I say uh, craving for cleanliness, you may ask me, Sir, does it mean I should not uh, be clean? That is not what I am saying. But when that becomes a kind of an obsession, then uh, you will not be able to think. If another person is not clean, you will only get agitated. Instead of thinking calmly, now how to get that person to do whatever is required to keep things clean, your mind will become so stressed and you lose all your peace of mind. So craving gives rise to unrealistic expectations and unrealistic expectations uh, uh, give rise to stress. And as the stress increases, that will lead to loss of shantihi, loss of peace. So, a sthita pragnya is very peaceful because he is not stressed. Why is he not stressed? Because he doesn't have unrealistic expectations. All his expectations, first of all, he doesn't have expectations. He doesn't have expectations means his expectations are in conformity with the realities of life. 
when you expect the sun to rise in the east, you will have no issues. And his, uh, 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 since he doesn't have any unrealistic expectations, it means he, he, he has no craving. He is well established in this principle of Nispriha. So as far as you are concerned, go backwards. You st wherever you, you, are, you are not peaceful, now see, you will be stressed there. And now find out what the realities of the situation are and how your mind is caught up with unrealistic expectations. Now you work on them, find out that craving. As you work on the craving, now you the, the clarity will automatically come to you. Uh, this is uh, what the realities of life are. Now you will learn to accept them and then you will put on all efforts to change them, to change them to the best of your ability. When you are having this prahaha and your mind is stressed, you lose the ability to deal with the situation. This is what you need to uh, understand. Accepting a situation, having realistic expectations doesn't mean now you stop functioning. Actually, that's, uh, this sadhana is suggested so that you get that inner strength, the clarity and calmness to be able to deal with the other person, to be able to deal with the situation. So, this is not only throughout your life. It, uh, uh, even uh, death, if we take the phenomenon of death, that is the reality of life. But the mind refuses to accept it. You know, uh, when uh, Yudhishthira was asked, what is the most amazing thing in life? His answer was uh, very interesting. He said, in spite of uh, we seeing uh, everyone dying around us, we strongly believe that we will never die. At least we have many, many years still. That is the most amazing thing, he said. It's a very deep principle he is giving. So when you learn to accept the realities of life, your mind will, uh, that is, uh, uh, when I say learning to accept the realities, it means the mind conforms to the natural laws, the realities of life, then it will automatically get pacified, it will become peaceful. See, there was a, a lady who lost her husband, this happened many years back. She lost her uh, husband and uh, she came to me and she asked me, Sir, uh, is there any thing which can be done, any mantra or something where some magic can be done so that he comes back to life? I was so surprised when she asked this question because she was very seriously and sincerely asking this. See, her mind had become so stressed that she was even unaware of what she was asking. I said, uh, so you want to know whether there are any ways by which your husband can come back to life? She said, yes. Now, this may, the fact that she was asking that question means her stress level had gone to a very uh, uh, big extent. So, I didn't even give any answer. I said, uh, you just sit quietly, close your eyes for a while and uh, went on invoking the higher Shakti. A lot of healing happened. So, that brought out all the deep-rooted sorrow from within and she cried and uh, you know as the healing energy was sent to her everything was getting released the most interesting part is when she came to me she was smiling 
See, uh, uh, this is what happens when you suppress your emotions. Externally, she was smiling, but so much was there inside. So about uh, twenty-five percent healing was given to her at that time, uh, and then after that, she became a little more balanced. Then I told her, "Did you realize what you asked me?" She said, "Yes, sir. It is a very foolish question which I asked you." Then I uh, gave her the incident which happened with Lord Buddha. Once, when Buddha was sitting under a under the tree and he was uh, giving a discourse to his students, a lady came to him, and uh, she had the dead body of her son, uh, and she placed the son's body in front of him. and she said my son has died and uh, i want you to bring him back to life to which lord buddha you know these great masters they have their own way of uh, answering they have their own methods of uh, uh, of uh, sending the wisdom to in the, in the minds of uh, these uh, the students So what Buddha told her was definitely I will bring him back to life, but I require uh, you know the kadug the uh, which we use in cooking no. So he said I just want a few of those seeds, uh, but one condition you should go to and you should get those seeds from. a house where no death has taken place till now so her first reaction was she thought she'll go to her kitchen and get it but her uh, uh son had died so she was unable to do that so she started going around the town she knocked every door and said and asked has anybody died in your house till now in your family and obviously the answer was yes So after about a few hours, she came back. So Buddha asked her, "What happened?" She came and said, "I've got my answer." She had become very peaceful, because in this process of going around, of course, Buddha was sitting there and he was giving her the healing as she was doing the sad. It was a sadhana which he had given her to gain the practical wisdom. She, her mind realized. that death is is one of the realities of life just as birth is a reality death is also another reality so the moment the mind accepted that it became peaceful there was no question further question asked by her so i told this to the, to this lady she was in a much better position to absorb this uh, than uh, when she had initially come you know because at that time everything was closed So I told her, see, when you it's, it's because of your intense craving that you are asking these questions, you are having unrealistic expectation. Now you need to accept the realities. Your question should be, how do I get out of this sorrow? How do I release this uh, this stress? Instead of asking that question, your uh, your uh, expectations are being unrealistic. i am giving you this uh, uh example this incident so that you understand the principle clearly Th- there is an extreme incident which happened but the same principle is applicable in every area of your life whenever you have unrealistic expectations you will not seek the right solutions your question itself will be wrong the moment you ask uh, how do i now uh, change my boss or how do i change my partner that question itself is wrong your question should be how do i deal with that person because it is not in your hands to change another person that person has his or her own karmas you cannot change your own children so easily because they have their karmas i am not saying you should not put in efforts All I'm saying is that unrealistic expectation which the mind has 
forces you to ask the wrong questions, forces you to uh, seek solutions which are, uh, which are actually irrelevant. And that is why you are uh, continuing with the problems of life. So if you apply this wisdom, just this nispraha in the right way in your life, you will find that you will, you will start getting solutions to almost all your problems in life. You will start becoming very, very peaceful, shanti. So peace is not something which you can buy. Peace is not something which comes on its own. When you rem uh, yes, of course it comes on its own, but you, you have to put in efforts to remove all the negative factors and create a conducive atmosphere within yourself. Then the peace which is there within you will automatically start manifesting. You will be flooded with that inner infinite peace. So a very, very powerful sadhana, nispraha. And I also told you about the other dimension of uh, spraha, which means envy, jealousy. So last week I told you, don't compare yourself with others. Now, I'll give you uh, one more uh, tip there, which will help you so much. That is, uh, when he says don't have envy, jealousy, there is a, uh, uh, there is a, a small catch there. It is, it is more deep than uh, uh, what, it may, uh, uh, what it may look like. The, the principle there is, see, you always feel jealous about a person who has more than you. Now, the moment he says don't have jealousy, it also means the, op the, the other side of it, the, the other face of the coin, which is don't feel arrogant towards people who have less than you. See, when you are suffering from spraha, what will happen is, Whenever you meet someone who has more than you, you will feel jealous. But if you have the capacity to feel jealous, it means you will also feel arrogant whenever you meet someone who has lesser than you. In, in that aspect of life. So a person may be very arrogant. So he should not conclude and say that, oh, uh, my problem is different. I don't have spraha. That is also spraha only. It's a hidden quality. You know, when you see one face of the coin, the other face is, uh, the other side of the coin is hidden to you. But what you need to understand is, if you pick up one side of the coin, the other side also comes along with you. You cannot pick up only one side. So similarly, if you have this jealousy, it means you are capable of being arrogant also. So whenever in life you meet people, how should you approach? Either that person will have more than you or that person will have less than you. Immediately the mind will get into jealousy or the mind will get into a state of superiority, arrogance. So, practicing not to get into those two states is the sadhana of nispraha. So, it is not enough if you merely conquer envy, jealousy. The other side also you should be careful about. Because sometimes if you try to curb one side of this quality, now the mind can play a trick and enter uh, you know, uh, the, the, this quality can enter your system through the other side and you will not be aware of it at all. So, this tendency to compare yourself with others, you know, there is usually a solution is given, uh, always look at people who have lesser than you that and feel uh, grateful. There is a small danger with that 
principle. Whenever you keep looking at people who have lesser than you, you may actually end up with more superiority complex, more ego, more arrogance. So the solution is not in looking at people lower than you or looking at people higher than you. The solution is to look within, look at yourself. What are your strengths? And nurture your strengths. The more you uh, nurture your strengths, because you are only living your life. Nobody else is living your life. So whatever you have to get in your life, you will get it. Who is going to stop it from you? It is because of your unrealistic expectations you feel that, oh, I should have got that, but that person has got it and all that. But the law of karma is very, very powerful, strong. It is factual. Whatever you have got in your life today, it's, that is what you deserve. Now, if you want to get better results, now look into uh, yourself, look within and look at the forces which are operating within you. Whatever the negative factors are there which are preventing you from getting it, now work on those factors. Now don't become jealous about others or don't become arrogant about others and dissipate your energy. Whenever you are into jealousy or arrogance, now I am adding this arrogance also here with prahaha. Even though prahaha directly means only envy, jealousy, we have to add the other sign, uh, other side of the coin. Like the coin is, has heads means it has tails also. So then only the, the picture becomes complete. So whenever you are having sprihaha, that is uh, envy or arrogance, your energies, your energies are getting dissipated. And you will quickly form unrealistic expectations because when you are comparing yourself with others and you are trying to live a life according to what others are having, now isn't that totally unrealistic because you have your nature, you are living your life. Where does the other person uh, come in? It is all in your mind only. So when you practice this nisprihaha and become peaceful, that is when you get the ability to relate with others also in a peaceful way. See, when you are relating with others with prihaha, then you are either jealous or you are arrogant. Then how can you relate to that person in a peaceful way? You will have relationship issues. So if you practice this nisprihaha, all your relationships, uh, that is your relationships with others, uh, whether it is your uh, near, near family or whether it is your colleagues or friends or everyone, those relationships will start uh, improving. Not that the other person is, is uh, the other people are changing. It is because you are changing from within. You are changing your very attitude, your very perception about life. So how does a sthita pragnya function? He assesses the entire life and understands what the realities of life are. If a, if a birth occurs, he knows that death is also a part of life. It is not that he is sitting and expecting uh, death to come. Now, don't again mistake. I am only saying an objective assessment and um, uh, under, uh, understanding of the realities of life. If a prophet comes, he knows loss can also come. If joy comes, he knows sorrow, is also, sorrow can also come. The possibility is there. No doubt when you do sadhana, you are maximizing the occurrence of joy in your life. But at the same time, you should do the sadhana in the right way so that it gives you the inner strength and prepares you if a sorrow or any kind of challenge comes in your life. So without understanding the realities of life, the mind goes on pitching up unrealistic expectations. Number one, this is the cause for all the stress. The 
other thing which happens is whenever you relate with people you uh, uh, either you get into a state of jealousy or you get into a state of arrogance depending upon uh, you, uh, you know what the other the quantity which the other person has of that particular object which you desire if you have an intense craving for wealth whenever you see people who are more wealthy you will feel very jealous whenever you see people who are less wealthy now you will throw your weight around you will be very arrogant see even in the mahabharata if you take duryodhana with respect to pandavas he had jealousy because he always felt he, they had more than him with respect to many others he was very arrogant he was also known to be a, an arrogant king so these two sides of uh, the coin the um, uh, which is prahaha will uh, you know they they ruin your peace of mind completely so ni sprahaha means developing the right expectations in life number 1 and number 2 stop comparing yourself with others and live your life fully don't develop any complexes if at all you have any complex now using this wisdom work on those complexes these two principles if you practice if you absorb them first and then start practicing i'm telling you that will create a phenomenal change in your life whatever bit of stress you have will all go away so this is ni spraha i have given you many many uh, facets of this sadhana so you start practicing them and then as we go along when the uh, when the same thing comes again elsewhere i'll give you more dimensions also see as i told you the absorption is so important here you know so uh, the, that person who moves about without craving without spraha ni spraha and then he says nir mamah nir mamah means without the sense of mindness without the sense of possessiveness you know that i possess these things and then nirahankarah without any ego it is a beautiful combination nir mamah and nirahankarah ahankarah means ego and nir mamah means no possessiveness no mindness of course when we go i am i'm only reading that right now uh, in the coming weeks we'll be going into a Uh, a lot of depth with uh, regard to this at that time you will be amazed to see uh, the power of uh, these words you know these sadhana principles so nirahankara that is ahankara means aham aham is to say ahankara means always being centered around the i i means the false i hear the ego so always thinking about oneself aham i am i am so most people think ego means superiority complex alone no inferiority complex is also ego if you think i am everything that is ego if you think i am nothing that is also ego because the focus is on i so that is ahankara now today i am just giving you uh uh a gentle idea of what this is and the next week we'll go into more more depth so where you have the i the ego with you and if your consciousness is always centered around that then that is ahankara 
he is not talking about the higher aham like uh, if you go to the vedas the aphorism is aham brahmasmi i am that infinite there that i is the expanded i it has become one with the infinite and therefore uh, that experience is something which is egoless when the same i is confined is restricted to the body is restricted to the mind is restricted to the intellect then it is called uh, a con- uh, uh, it is a conditioned state it is a limited i which is what we call as ego chit means consciousness when that consciousness is conditioned that is called chit when the ch- same consciousness is expanded then the chit becomes an expanded one it becomes one with the infinite so when your focus is all the time on that conditioned consciousness that i limited i then that is ego it manifests in so many ways you know every time you you will only be talking about yourself that is a pronounced ego talking about oneself where it is required is not ego but i'm saying the the emphasis is always on that i it is your whole life becomes centered on that i such people even when they go to a master they only talk about themselves and even if uh, the master gives a principle see you can do this they immediately say oh you know what i practice sir i did this i did that the master is just quiet <laughs> because when the ego is so pronounced that becomes a block you know what is the point in giving the wisdom whenever the ego is pronounced that uh, prevents you from receiving the higher wisdom because the higher wisdom focuses on the infinite whereas the ego focuses on the limited i so they are diametrically opposite so this will not exist when that is there that will not exist when this is there you know um uh, some pe- the the ego comes in so many ways it is amazing some people they try to deliberately avoid the word i Th- their focus is also on i only see like for example if you take swami ramatita many a times he used to refer to himself as rama that is not a state of ego he was genuinely one with the infinite and in that inspiration when he was talking he used to say rama did this rama did that now there are many people after reading that they try to follow that mechanically one uh, person uh, uh, sent a mail long back in that mail about 5 6 times he is mentioning his own name uh, i am not mentioning the name here let us say his name was uh, x now he, he, he said x did this when he was a child x did this uh, la, la, last year x is feeling like this so for one second i was wondering who this person is and then when you saw he was only that person so when i felt the energy i could see that the hidden ego the ego was so strong he is trying to emulate uh, what ramatita did in a mechanical way but the the energy of the ego was so strong that it was coming out you know so when he says nirahankara it is a it is not such an easy sadhana to quench the ego Uh, sorry to destroy the ego is uh, one of the most difficult things direct directly you may handle it but it will come out in indirect ways so we'll be we'll see that in detail as we go along the indirect ego is more difficult to handle see if a person is straight forward then it is easier but when your mind starts uh, um you know uh, you know uh, expressing that is when the ego starts expressing in an indirect way 
like what this person did you know he sent the mail with there was not even one word i because all the i's were replaced by his name and he was talking as if he has reached the state of which ramatita had reached as if he was a stita pragnya so much of emphasis on the ego and what is very interesting is the ahankar when your entire consciousness is centered around the i you will develop what is called as the sense of mindness that is why he is giving both these together actually we will see them independently and then we will also see from the other angle that is how one leads to the other the sanskrit uh, construction is also very very interesting because aham means i and mama is the possessive case ending of i so if you have that i ahanka ahankar within you now you are bound to develop possessiveness which is mama so from the very um uh, construction the the choice of uh, words which he is using itself we can see the the relationship between these two so once the ego develops into a sense of possessiveness now you will get into a lot of problems that will increase the stress tremendously see these are all factors which actually destroy your peace of mind so we will uh, study uh this in detail in the coming uh, sessions today a lot of uh, subtle points have been given to you regarding the sadhana of nispraha so as i told you it is through reflection and practice that you can absorb these principles into your life and the more you absorb the it will also work in the reverse way it will help you to practice better and the more you practice it will help you to absorb better so the you know uh, trying to recapitulate the points and writing them down presenting they also play a major role in the internal absorption because when you are writing the points there they are actually uh uh getting absorbed within if you do it with the right bhavana okay so we'll stop with this today uh before we do the meditation i will take up one question this question has been asked by amrita haryom yogeshri would you kindly answer this question that i have been struggling with it has to do with the nature of one's bhavana how does one make one's bhavana pure when the mind or thoughts are not under one's control for example one wants to feel good intentions towards a friend but beyond one's control feelings of jealousy erupt within one trying to put off these negative thoughts or emotions only make it come back with more force or one ends up feeling depressed and guilty so how does one make one's bhavana pure i hope you would kindly answer this question with the deepest regards amrita now before i answer this question my first thing is you should never hope that i answer your question this is direct message to amrita and all other sadhaks also see you you have all the right to ask the question and you should have that faith that you will get the answer for sure it may either be in this way where i take up the question actually an answer or it may come during the discourse as i told you or sometimes you know uh, may, uh, the just the healing energy will be sent 
and you will get a solution when you are doing your sadhana. In some way the answer will be given. First you should develop that the faith in the higher. When, see you go to a guru because of uh, uh, this desire to liberate yourself, to become one with the infinite. So there will be a lot of struggle in the path and the master is there only to help the student, to guide the student and uh, you know, as a, uh, so that the student is able to uh, remove all these struggles, all these issues and become one with the infinite. So never ever hope when it comes to spirituality. Be sure. Yes, I have asked this question and I will get the answer in some way. You know, you must have experienced. Sometimes even if you don't put the question here, the answers would have been given. Many people have reported that also. You yourself would have experienced that many a times. So, this relationship with the higher uh, is, is based on realities. You can be 100% sure once you get into the spiritual path, the yogic approach, you will get your solutions, you will develop, you will become one with the infinite. That is the confidence which you should have. Okay, so now going to the actual question, it's a very practical question which uh, Amrita has asked. It is not pertaining to her, it is, I, this is a universal question I would say. Uh, when your mind is not under your control, how to practice the Shuddha Bhavana, the pure Bhavana? Because the thoughts of jealousy, today I have mentioned about um, arrogance. So these things will come, they are bound to come. So how do we do it? Now, uh, the one more point which has been uh, given is uh, so important. That is, what you have said is, if I try to put away those thoughts, they come back with greater force or that leads to a lot of guilt and disillusionment. This is what you said. This is a very good observation. That's exactly what I mentioned today also. The, you should neither get dissolution nor should you suppress. See, whenever you suppress anything, that will come back with greater force. If there is, see, your mind is like a spring. Supposing you keep the spring in a compressed way, you go on compressing the spring, then suddenly the force will go on increasing. So when at some point it will get released, it will come out with great force. So spirituality is not about suppression. See, when it is said nispriha, he is not saying suppress your cravings now, suppress your jealousy now. If you, the more you suppress, the more it will come back with greater force. That is why last week I had given this point about not watering your negative emotions. That is a subtle sadhana. You are neither suppressing nor are you encouraging. Whenever you encourage any thought, the thought will increase. Whenever you suppress the thought, then also that thought will increase. That is why we should never tell the children, don't do this, don't do that. Then they will want to do it more. Your mind is also like a child only, you know. So, watering a particular negative emotion means encouraging or suppressing. Not watering means being objective about it and allowing the emotion to slowly die away without encouraging it nor suppressing it. This is where the Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana will help you. See, if you are, if you are finding that the jealousy is surfacing too much, then what you should do is in the next sadhana, when you sit for your session in the Yoga Sankirtan, you sit and before you sit, you just close your eyes, uh, connect yourself to the Guru Shakti, the higher energy and uh, you bring this intention. I want to release 
whatever this negative forces of jealousy. Don't overdo it and don't expect results immediately. Just bring this intention and then do your yoga sankirtan sadhana. The healing will automatically happen. All the uh, factors related to the jealousy will start coming out. It may happen in one session, it may happen in several sessions. But the moment you put that intention to the higher and then when you do the sadhana, the energy will work in so many subtle ways and everything will get released. So this you should do on one hand. On the other hand, whenever the emotion comes out, when you are uh, functioning in the world, when the jealousy comes out, it could, uh, you have given the example of jealousy, it could be any negative emotion. Now practice that deep breathing method which I told you. You know, breathing in through the nose and then breathing out through the mouth, consciously. Now when you do that, what will happen? Why I am asking you to do that deep breathing is, See, when, when a negative emotion comes out, the mind gets completely caught up in that. So when you shift your focus to the deep breathing, when you breathe deeply and then when you do it consciously, what will happen is you will get that ability to stand apart from that emotion and watch that emotion. You will neither encourage that emotion nor will you suppress the emotion by saying, go away, go away. The more you say some negative thing has to go away, it will come back with greater force. So you should neither resist nor encourage. Now how do you practically do it? That is why I have given you that technique. It is a very ancient technique given by our holy Siddhas and uh, the great Maharishis, you know, this deep breathing. There are different ways to do it. This method is uh, very simple. In the empowerment sessions, many a times uh, you, you will be exposed to various other techniques also. So you can combine all that as you um, attend the empowerment programs. But the whole point here is to stand apart from the emotion and watch it. This is called not watering the emotion. If you are one with the emotion, Either you will suppress it, it will come back to you or you will develop a guilt. Because now you are also exposed to the higher wisdom, you know that that is not good. So you, there are chances of you developing uh, further guilt over that. So on one hand you do the gentle yoga sankirtan sadhana and keep cleaning yourself. Whenever an issue comes up, put an intention before you start. Uh, you know, my intention is I want to uh, release uh, this particular negative uh, energy within me. Don't develop a craving there also. Just the intention in a peaceful way and then connect to the Guru Shakti and do that and play the Yoga Sankirtan. You will find wonderful results. Be before you know, within a few days, you will find that that negative the, the force of that negative emotion would have started uh, reducing considerably. Okay, so you practice these two things, general sadhana of yoga sankirtan and uh, resolving things from the root. And then whenever it surfaces, practice the deep breathing technique so that you become a little objective, you start standing apart from the uh, emotion and you start watching it, you start observing it. As you watch uh, any negative emotion objectively, it means you are not watering it, you are neither suppressing it nor are you encouraging it. It will lose its momentum, it will lose its force. So practice this and then uh, if there is anything further, you can always raise your uh, questions. Don't hope that you will get an answer. With full conviction, be sure you will get an answer and then ask the question. 
this particular question i didn't give it in a i didn't give the answer in a subtle way i directly took up the question and i'm giving you the answer because of that statement which you had put i hope you will answer this the first thing as a sadhak which you which you need to develop is the confidence confidence in yourself confidence in your uh, guru confidence in the higher shakti god the three areas if you develop confidence self confidence full trust and confidence in your guru the guide and complete trust and surrender the uh, confidence on the higher shakti god then nobody can stop you from reaching the highest okay so think about this we'll say i'll give you more points as we go along so now we'll do the meditation sit in a relaxed way gently close your eyes do deep breathing with every breath i am feeling more and more divine I am going deep within myself. I am not this body I am not this mind
I am not this intellect. I am one with that infinite supreme being from this moment onwards i choose to conform my mind to the realities of life whenever i relate with others i choose to be free from jealousy or arrogance I am 100% satisfied and happy with myself. I am swayam prakashit self illuminating
offer your gratitude to God supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back Wriggle your fingers, your toes. Rub your palms together to create a warmth. Cup your eyes with your palms. Gently rub your eyes, your cheeks, forehead, top of the head, back of the head and neck. Slowly open your eyes. Welcome back. So today we had a very powerful and deep session. The points which I gave you are all so subtle. and if you manage to absorb it or rather to the extent you absorb these subtle points they will they will start working on the subtler levels of your personality to bring to bring about a change at the gross level is much easy but to bring about a change a transformation at the subtler levels of your personality is the most difficult thing and it is the yogic approach alone which will help you in creating that transformation okay so regarding the yoga sankirtan empowerment those of you who have registered as i told you already the healing has happened I mean this uh, has started every day I am sitting and uh, sending you a lot of energy which will prepare you for the higher empowerment and uh, the preparatory material the meditation material 
has been sent to you already so i hope your uh, doing that diligently according to the instructions provided it's very important because i've infused a lot of energy in that uh, preparatory material that energy which is required for you to attend the empowerment session in april so prescribe um, uh, stick to the uh, prescribed dosage also if if i say listen to it once a day in the morning listen to it in the morning if i say in the evening listen to it in the evening just because you feel nice now don't do it many times a day and all that okay this is uh, through that a lot of prepare uh, preparation a lot of healing is being done so you may find wonderful results happening uh immediately after you register for the program itself so so don't now develop any kind of uh, uh ego over that immediately understand it is a work of the higher energy higher shakti we bow down with complete reverence and gratitude and humility to the higher shakti okay so thank you very much I'll see you in the next session. Hari Om.